And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for a spicy one that we're starting the stream off with today. We had a challenge to make a happily ever after deck. And this is what we're going to be going with here. Uh, we'll see if it, you know, we'll see if it works. We'll see if the mana works. But, you know, we're going five color with happily ever after. So we have the, the engine of our deck is of course the the tried and true cauldron familiar gilded goose witches oven trail of crumbs right those those 20 cards or 16 cards sorry those 16 cards um you know the trail of crumbs can provide a lot of card advantage cauldron familiar um gets you a lot of life gets you a lot of chump blocking and so basically you want it because with this deck with trying to win with happily ever after we want to just stay alive and try to play till towards a late game and that's what this package does plus gilded goose is a five color mana creature and that's going to help us out too being able to add any color of mana because we're going to need that so we're, we're going to need that but i guess i could have led it that's our engine but here's our, our main win con this is what we're going to be trying to win with happily ever after two and a white enchantment whenever happily ever after enters the battlefield each player gains five life and draws a card so that's pretty important there you know like we're trying to stay alive that five life that's pretty important Plus, we get to draw a card. Our opponent gains five life, but we don't really care about that. And they get to draw a card. That's that's not the best, but that's okay. But then at the beginning of our upkeep, so we have to untap with Happily Ever After. We have to have it in play. And then also, we have to have five colors among the permanents you control, six or more card types among permanents you control and or cards in your graveyard, and your life total is greater than or equal to your starting life total to win the game. So cauldron familiars can be, are going to be pretty important of, of like keep getting our life total back up there. Um, you know, five colors among permanents you control. That's pretty obvious what that means. If you don't really understand the six or more card types among permanents you control and or cards in your graveyard. So basically stuff on the battlefield and stuff in your graveyard needs six or more card types. There's really like seven that we're going to be looking at here. There's land. That's easy. There's enchantment that's going to be hit by happily ever after being on the battlefield. Then there's artifact, creature, planeswalker. So there's there's those five uh, permanents, um, the planeswalker being the hardest one. And then there's also instant and sorcery. <clears throat> we we're playing two discoveries here. That's both instant and sorcery. So whenever discovery is in the graveyard, it would count as an instant and a sorcery. So that that could help us out there. Um, we of course have Fay of Wishes here. Uh, they can go grab other other cards that we need. They can kind of help us out with sorceries. Um, I guess it doesn't really help us out with instant. Unless we want to get to spark too much. <clears throat> but that can help us out. Casting the five different colors of, of cards is going to be kind of difficult. So we got Fires of Invention in here. Plus that's our red permanent. So we actually have permanents of every color we could have in play. But the easy way to kind of cheat it is the plain white celebration because plain white celebration creates a 2-2 citizen creature token that's all colors. So that that just counts as your five colors if you have one of those citizen creature tokens in play. Plus plain white celebration can gain a lot of life also to help get you back up to your starting life total for happily ever after. We got some wraths with realm cloak giant that we can find with trail of crumbs. Um, Othakaya gains us some life plus also if they want to attack our planeswalkers it gains us life. Tamio can help dig to find different things and also put cards in the graveyard. Putting cards in the graveyard is important with Happily Ever After. So, yeah, we haven't, you know, we're going to kind of see if, if our mana works out and everything and how this deck works. Let's just kind of give it a try. Here we go. We're going to play just like we do always do with donation decks. We're playing it through a league. We're going to play until we win five or lose two, whatever happens first. <laughs> no, not the ever after reanimation from Shadows over in his draw. No, happily ever after. Hey, what's up, Matthew? <sighs> Happy Sunday. This is a Sunday fun day stream here. Sure. How could we struggle casting anything here? Hmm. 
So I'm, I'm probably just going to be activating Trail of Crumbs this next turn. Or I could play Goose and Cauldron Familiar. Are they going to be killing my Goose? If I do that? Possibly. <laughs> oh, I don't I'm not sure about you. I haven't I haven't thought about that yet. Um Nah, sorry USS, don't really have time for that. Cuz we got all all the decks that we got to get in today. <clears throat> Midnight Reaper. Blech. That card's good. Yay, land drop. The problem, of course, is... Is we didn't get to play Othakaya or Vraska Wagari Queen there. Which I'd, I would have preferred to play one of those two cards. The Spinnite Reaper puts us in a much tougher spot than, than what it really looks like we would be otherwise. because it just makes the Realm Cloak Giant a lot worse. I probably need to Oath of Kaya kill the Midnight Reaper, but then they get to sack it now with the Witch's Oven. This is all just... I guess I have to just let them draw four cards, I guess. It's all just kind of annoying. Yeah, I gotta just let them draw their cards. That makes sense, Matthew. That makes sense. Now they have infinite cards. It's a Midnight Reaper card. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Not liking that card one bit. Alright, 
what are we doing here? <laughs> I leave dead bodies forever back to the shadows for now. So basically, I want to get that Witch's Oven out of here so that Othakaya kills Midnight Reaper and we gain life. I also want to hit a land drop. Playing Gilda Goose did get me like another mana source out there instead of trying that. Pretty surprised they're just attacking me, honestly. Seems like for for just two damage, it's they could have saved the murderous rider. That's probably better use, you know. Like it's better to save it, but I don't know. They can do them. <laughs> uh, what I tap the red source I was like I'm not casting anything for red here like, I'm not I'm not tapping anything for red um I'm still just gonna take it you know that's kind of awkward They're down to five? I'm just gonna burn them out with Oth Othakaya and Cauldron Familiar? Huh. I didn't quite realize they're at five. Okay. We got game one. This is definitely a Knight of Autumn matchup. I'm cutting Murderous Rider. Um, I think that's all I'm going to do, sideboard-wise. Yeah, that's all I'm going to do. Keep, you know, it, when you're playing a Fae of Wishes deck, you don't want to sideboard too much, because it's good to have your cards over in your sideboard that you want to get with Fae of Wishes still. Storm. Don't use that language. Come on. Hey, Azeroth. I'm doing good. And thank you so much. Yeah, Golos could be... Golos could... Like, honestly, we could be playing one Golos in here. To ramp us, help fix our mana. This kind of deck, like with fires, we could activate Golos. Um, and then still cast up with fires. Like one Golos could be good in here. I don't really know where we would find room for it. 
This is definitely a keep. Pretty easy keep. We'll discovery on turn two. Look for green mana. This is not green mana, but that's a pretty important card. We still got discovery to look for green mana. I'm going to keep that. There's green. Do I want another watery grave? I need another white for Realm Cloak Giant, but we have Gilded Goose. I think I do. I mean, I definitely want land. Watergrave's not like the best land to have here, but it's a land. Uh, these sleeves are not in, in the store. They're part of the um, secret lair bundle that had a bunch of different sleeves. Had seven different sleeves. They're part of that bundle. It's time to step out of the shadows. Alive. The other watery grave could help me cast dispersal. If need be. This Golgari Queen is going to be difficult for me to deal with since I cut Murderous Rider for Night of Autumn. No, Wrangler, I don't. So I'm getting a little punished for taking out Murderous Rider. So looking for land here. Um, no, nah, no shock.
Yeah, let me know. Let me know what codes don't don't of those codes don't work anymore, and then we can we can delete them from the the code command. That's a really good card to, to draw before attacking with Corvold. That's pretty good. This is an uh, this is a dragon noble, not a giant. That's even better. Uh, I don't I don't know anything about the standard shakeup. Okay, this is that's the very first I've heard of it. I don't, I don't know anything about it. Sometimes sacrifice is necessary. <laughs> yep, that's nice that dress can't take the wrath. So fires is, is really nice because now we can spend mana just like cracking these foods and, and activating the, the trail of crumbs and getting more cards and not mana on our actual cards, which is nice. But of course they get they do get to destroy the trailer crumbs with the Golgari Queen. My opponent did say good game. I don't know if that means I'm supposed to be dead or something. I guess they probably have casualties of war, it looks like. We're gonna have to play at least one Murderous Rider because we've seen Golgari Queen, but then also Corvold, those two cards be a real problem. It seems Deadpool, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. It's our first sub of the day. Casualties of War is a problem as well.
I'm actually going to sideboard out a Happily Ever After because of Golgari Queen. Yep, this is the traditional standard event. Looks like we're on machine gun game plan. Darn. Should have played the other oven. I played the goose because like with three mana that we that we knew that we we're gonna be able to have three mana next turn that I could play the oven and activate goose to make a new food. Kind of just need the trail crumbs now. Uh, sub battle. The sub battles are just a once a month thing. Sub battle Saturday is the last Saturday of every month. I just do that one day a month. <clears throat> that was definitely the worry that I had of using the Knight of Autumn last turn was that they have trail of crumbs. I could have been patient. I wanted to get the attacker out there with us being aggressive here. That's like the second decision that didn't really go my way, though. You know, playing the goose first instead of the oven, that definitely did not go my way. And then I'm not sure about that Knight of Autumn. They're down to 10. Not like they can't gain life though with, with the food, but you know, like we're we're trying over here. Another cauldron familiar. Trailer crumbs would be our best draw. Um, Fay of wishes would be amazing. I only pick targets that interest me. Lucky. We're gonna have to hit something here, though. We are very far behind now. On, on the battlefield. Pity we couldn't have been allies. Not a good draw.
<clears throat> I wish I would have played Witch's Oven first, and I wish I would have saved my Night of Autumn to destroy the Trail of Crumbs. Those two decisions. Coming back to haunt me. I didn't bring back the Cauldron Familiar last turn because we weren't going to be attacking with it through a Gilded Goose anyway. And we had the opportunity to draw a Trail of Crumbs that would have rewarded us for for keeping it in, in the graveyard. Now, of course, with the Mayhem Devil, we should probably bring it back now. No, I don't think there's any room for Charming Prince here the ends justify the means that that looks like a pretty terrible decision to just sacrifice a land I, mean, I don't know why they don't just activate goose and make a food and sack the food and then be able to keep their land and then they can also activate the trail of crumbs there and draw two cards instead, and they don't have to get rid of one of their lands. Lands are really valuable. Man, we have not drawn well. All right, Golgari Queen, do something for us, please. No, I, I don't USS because yeah I I stream every day seven hours every day and that's that's the most amount of the magic that I do I don't I don't really play other people off stream. Being ruthless has it. Well, now they figured it out. Just little decisions can cost you. And they certainly did this game for me. We haven't drawn any of our top end. I mean, the Golgari Queen is going to be like our first top end card. But we need, you know, like Fae of Wishes would be awesome. Drawing that. But uh, we need to be able to deal with this Golgari Queen somehow. We can at least get Trailer Crumbs out of here now. That's step one. It doesn't have to be that taking this long. Because uh, that Trail of Crumbs draws lots and lots of cards. Mayhem Devil does a little bit of damage, but, you know, I have, like, the Gilded Goose with food tokens. A little bit of damage is not as valuable as a lot of cards. It's a, see, it's a... You know, basically, the, the cards are a lot more valuable. Sacrifice. Yeah, opponents figured out how to play now.
Game one, we had Trail of Crumbs advantage. We won game two and three. My opponent has had Trail of Crumbs advantage. Oh, come on. Such a bad card to be drawing. <laughs> Ugh. I'm not sure, Nate. I don't know. Yeah, Jun Sacrifice is really strong. Um, I don't know, Adam. This is the first I've heard of the standard shakeup event that, like, while on stream here, just a couple of people mentioning it. I, so I don't really know anything about it. So I don't I don't know if I'll be playing it or not. I don't know. Yeah, it is the sleeves that are bringing it, bringing the cats out. Its pain is our. Yeah, Grixis control can be competitive. I like that Grixis control list that we played the other day, except for against Trail of Crumbs. I really don't know how this game's still going. My opponent's played so poorly, just not doing anything this whole time. This game could have been over a very long time ago, but I don't know. It's not doing anything. Yeah, you never know. We could... <clears throat> we have... Big draw steps. Probably none bigger than Tay of Wishes. But my opponent, my opponent's just not doing anything. Probably with Corvold, they'll finally start doing something, though. Like, I, I don't think they can mess it up from here. I'm going to move on with life and go on to a different game because that game was really frustrating. Made two small decisions that turned out to really hurt us. One, but then two, we didn't, you know, we didn't draw anything but lands and cauldron familiars for like six or seven or eight draw steps in a row. It was probably like round eight draw steps in a row. That was just either land or cauldron familiar. So that's unfortunate. To play Gilded Goose right now, we're basically looking at shocking in for Gilded Goose, shocking for Discovery, shocking for Golgari Queen. Just too many shocks in a row. Huh. Fires changes things. 
I was going to be playing Discovery this turn. But now with Fires, we'll go the Goose this turn, so then I can go Fires, Discovery next turn. And then I'll have Golgari Queen plus whatever else next turn, the turn after. So looks like this could just be Simic Flash, though. Which would be bad for me. Yeah, fires getting countered is definitely very bad for me. Not have gone any worse. Nature's true power. Yeah, that really could not have gone any worse. Counterspell into Nissa. The, the sad thing is I would really like Trail of Crumbs. But we just don't have time because of Nissa. I need Murderous Rider. Um, I guess that helps a little bit. Hey, Vitellius. Doing good. Doing good. Our chances of winning this are still really, really low, even if this resolves. Alright, now there's zero. Okay, need Duress and Dispark. Dispark is perfect against the Ambusher and Nyssa. Um, Yeah, the, the problem BC yeah, so the question is do you like the temples for the mana base here for Scry instead of Shocklands? Do you find the loss of temple worth it? Basically Um the thing is is not necessarily like I like Shockland you know, like Shocklands are, are great, but we can't really play twenty Shocklands. Like we can't just every single turn be paying two life, two life, two life whenever we're playing um untapped lands like I, I don't think we really want 20 shock lands and so we have we have just a few temples uh kind of in there also because sometimes we do need to play tap lands and so if we have to play tap lands anyway it's good to have temples that can get you scry instead of just playing a land and tapped because we just can't play 20 shock lands
not I I have no idea teaser Am I supposed to be keeping Gilded Goose? Or looking for other gasoline? Like the mana fixing that it has, but maybe we don't need it at this point. Yeah, maybe the maybe the Gilded Goose is a bad keep when I already have six lands. It's just an extra mana source. drawn temple last turn and then I would have played temple and scribed this to the bottom anyway Yeah, we get extra food. That's really only valuable if we have trailer crumbs, though. Yeah, I, th I think that the rest of the temple cycle is going to be in Theros. I, I don't really see any reason why it wouldn't be. <clears throat> so, you know, we should have... Yeah, we should have all, all the colors that don't have temples right now. Should get them. been a really frustrating league not gonna lie this has been a really frustrating league These these are the temples, the the lands enter and tapped. This game's over. They have their two best cards, the Ambusher and Nissa. And still have counter magic up. It's just, yeah, the flood's unreal. That just happened, you know, multiple games that league. So 
I just went 0 and 2. That's how both of our losing games there were just flooding out terribly. We're playing 25 lands, you know, it's, that's like a normal amount of lands to be playing. Um, man, that was really disappointing. I don't think I don't think that it was really the the deck's fault. Like I don't think that 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 um, our deck was necessarily bad. We just we ran into two very good decks that that curved out well, and we just drew all lands, and it's just we couldn't we couldn't do anything. Um. Um. We'll play one more with this being a donation deck. I don't like just that we just have the two matches there and and how poor of matches those are. So let's just play one more over in ranked to try to try to actually play magic once. <clears throat> so let's let's see how this does. All right, we got Trail of Crumbs, our best card. So that's good. So the thing is, I do need more cards, because we already have six lands. So I, I need more cards to play, but the problem with Tamiyo is Tamiyo doesn't affect the battlefield. Oh well, it's just so much better than drawing a land. Yeah, hey girl ninja. Welcome to the stream early. Well, that was fantastic. Day of wishes. We haven't drawn you like at all. Got a good hand over there. So I guess we're gonna need a shock twice in a row. Okay, so they're not playing Tamiyo yet.
No, I, I gotta get either of these cards and give them the two temple gardens. Man, this has not been a good day so far. That's not been a good day. The plan kind of was to play uh, to shock in with, with Fae of Wishes and go grab Time Wipe, but that would require two shocks. We couldn't stay alive doing that. I just need this third Fires of Invention in the main deck. Now I don't want to put the time wipe in the main board because I still want that I still want the ability to grab that with Fae of Wishes. We have their own cloak giants in the main board. Um I'm not I'm not really expecting Knight of Autumn to do a whole lot. I'm not really expecting them to have I don't think that, like I don't think this is a cavalcade deck. I don't really expect them to have frenzy. They could have um, Ember Cleave, but uh, honestly, there's there's not really like Knight of Autumn's not bad. But looking at like the main deck, I like all the cards that we're playing. I'm I'm pretty satisfied with all the cards that we have in our deck. Um, you know, I could be playing it over happily ever after, but um. I like Heavily after, Ever After. You know, gain five life, draw a card. I like that. So with us having Happily Ever After, Othakaya, I like this too. Like, I don't... We just don't really have room for Night of Autumn. Getting to start with a couple of temples, getting some good scries. I like our chances here. Do need either another white or black source to be able to cast Oath of Kaya. Now the the, the Gilded Goose is gone.
certainly wish we could cast the Othakaya. We've also just gotten paired against three players that are really slow. It's also been frustrating with how, how we've been drawing and everything. For a lot of those other games, and it's just been... Wait, wait, wait. Well, they could have attacked Vraska for one with a Fervent Champion, but decided to use an entire card with a Shock instead. So we... So Vraska did get a two-for-one. We got to get rid of two cards. That's pretty nice. Okay. That's really rough. It's kind of my plan is to gain a lot of life here. That hurts. And I just used my Othakaya, and they stole my other Othakaya. Yeah, Tybalt kind of is our kryptonite. We're definitely a life gain deck. Yeah, I need I need to kill their Tybalt. Cauldron Familiar doesn't take doesn't kill the Tybalt. I have to kill Tybalt. So I have to take Murder's Rider. So they're going to use minus two on their Chandra to shock the goose. Um, I'm kind of like the only thing I can think of them having is Rimrock Knight in hand for them to attack first. Because I don't I don't know why you wouldn't just do that first and then attack to make sure the damage is in and not me get one point of blocking unless there's a Rimrock Knight that they want me to block. Oh, wow. Never mind. I guess that's why. I guess I wanted to cast that. Mother Ludi always say, yeah, yeah, I mean, I could be giving my opponent too much credit. Who knows? My assistants are painfully sloppy. They're not, they don't play Cavalcade. It's not a Cavalcade deck.
Guess there's a good chance that I'm just dead here. This castle, em these castle embers are really scary. With Chandra. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I'm staying alive here. Hey, Sinister. Hey, Storm! I've done the subbing thing before. Thank you so much there, Storm. Um, basically, I don't think we really have... Yeah, I was kind of doing the math with playing... If we play Murderous Rider, we die. If... I mean, as long as they play correctly... Shoot, they probably won't. All right, I guess we'll play Murderous Rider. I mean, it's, it, Murderous Rider, put it, playing Murderous Rider does play put me in the best position if they just play incorrectly. But it, this does just put me dead on board. Thing is, we were dead on board for just blocking with Gilded Goose, sacking and gaining three life and going to 11. We are still gonna die. That Chandra Acolyte of Flame with these Castle Embreaths was awesome, but... Yep, we can't win them all, Kendis. Can't win them all. Alright, so we tried Happily Ever After. We needed... We needed more... I mean, alright, so like against the, you know, the red deck, like they just didn't stumble whatsoever, you know, just curved out really well. One drop, two drop, three drop, and just... Just, uh you know, had just a great curve both games, and I just couldn't stabilize. And, you know, against the other decks, we just didn't have cards. You know, like, we just, um, you know, we just faced faced opponents that had really good hands, and us, not so much. Um, I do think this could work, you know, for as far as five color, or as far as happily ever after goes. It did seem like I needed a Maybe that third Fire Zone Invention in the main deck to help cast spells. Um, I was surprised how little cards we had in a lot of those games. A lot of those games we didn't have Trail of Crumbs going. Not those last ones against Red, but the other ones. Um, I thought that we were going to do pretty good with this deck, honestly. I thought that we were going to do pretty well with this. But those games were not for us. All right, uh, that's five color ever after. 
can't win them all. Um, but, you know, we gave it a shot there, putting together a happily ever after deck. Um, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hope you enjoyed the brew uh, here and, you know, hope you enjoyed the, the test of the five colors. If you're trying it out on at home, let me know how it's going. Um, we did hear, uh, did have somebody else here in chat at the beginning and said they were trying to deck themselves and won their first match against Mono White. Um, but yeah, if you're trying it later on, let me know how it's going for you. But thank you so much for watching some five color ever after, and I'll see you for the next video.